There's four aspects to recovery after limb lengthening. Question is, are you maximizing each for the best possible outcome? What's up guys, Victor from Cyborg for Life, and today we're gonna go over the four phases of recovery after limb lengthening surgery, which include bone healing, soft tissue conditioning, muscle strengthening, and biomechanical adaptations. Now, since each of these aspects is pretty important, I'm just gonna give a broad overview today, and then I'll probably do a video on how to achieve each of these later on. All right, so the first phase is bone healing, which involves filling in the lengthened gap with enough regenerate so that it can harden once you finish the distraction process. Bone healing is dependent on a few different factors, including the distraction rate. If you lengthen faster than your body can keep up, then your bones can't heal. It also depends on sufficient nutrients. If you're deficient in the raw materials that make up the bone matrix, then you're gonna probably have trouble making new bones. And finally, axial loading or weight bearing. It's a very osteogenic process when you start to bear a portion or all of your body weight, but it is dependent on the lengthen devi lengthening device that you have inside of your bones. The next phase of recovery is soft tissue conditioning, which includes muscle flexibility, nerve sensitivity, and blood vessel vascularization. Regaining your flexibility in your muscles and the range of motion of your joints is super important so that you can walk normally. Also, breaking up scar tissue to realign the fibers of your muscles and the fascia is gonna help with long-term pain and stiffness, as well as increase the force output once you get back to exercising again. Desensitizing the nerves can also help with alleviating pain and you know, getting rid of a lot of those irritating flare-ups that might linger months after you stop lengthening. And finally, improved blood flow circulation from cardio can increase angiogenesis or vascularization inside the bones and muscles to help heal these tissues a lot more efficiently by enhancing nutrient delivery. So the third phase is strengthening, and this highlights the fact that a flexible muscle is nothing without the strength to move. So gradually increasing your muscle strength will help you normalize your walk so that when you know you go out in public it's a lot more natural and you're more mobile and it doesn't look you know draw any attention to you and the final phase is balance balance with your new biomechanics essentially when you lengthen your bones you are changing your biomechanics and besides conditioning and strengthening your muscles increasing your balance and proprioceptive adaptation will help you transition back into your athletics a whole lot faster. In fact, people who undergo unilateral lengthening to fix a discrepancy or bilateral lengthening you know, for stature and height are gonna realize that once they adapt to their new biomechanics and become more body aware, they're gonna rapidly regain most, if not all, of their pre-op abilities, assuming that they underwent a safe lengthening you know, within their limitations. Trust me, I've seen some really amazing you know, footage of patients doing some rather athletic feats, let's just say that. <laughs> now I should probably mention that the X factor to all of these phases is to avoid complications. Because let's say that you need a soft tissue release uh, due to lengthening more than what your body can handle. Well, that could impact your conditioning and your strength potential by default, meaning that you might not be able to do what you did pre-surgery. But I mean, even with all these recovery phases mapped out, it can still be pretty hard for the patient to be compliant. I mean, they're going under a tremendous amount of trauma during the lengthening process, and it gets really exhausting. I just dream of the day that there could be some sort of technological advancement that could help all these phases go smoothly. But then again, cyborgs don't dream, do they? <laughs> All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a huge favor, hit that like button, be sure to subscribe, and until next time, this is Victor from Cyborg for Life, signing out. Peace. Oh, before I go, I just wanna say thank you guys for all your support. Um, in my last video, I was talking about how I tore my pec tendon. Well, I had the surgery, it was successful. They reattached it to my bone. Now I'm in the recovery process. Um, I have to wear the shoulder sling for a total of six weeks, about, I don't know, two and a half weeks in, so another month or so. And then I start a long, arduous journey of rehab, my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> um, it's gonna be, you know, throughout the summer, I'm gonna be doing that, and then maybe this fall, I can get back to training hardcore. Uh, but I really appreciate all you guys' support. It was, you know, emails, phone calls, text messages, WhatsApp messages, everything, it was incredible. So I appreciate that, it shows that this community is really, really strong. Let's keep it going, and until next time, I'll see you guys then, peace.